Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. Today's video is actually sponsored by me, as for a limited time, I'm gonna be giving away my course on Udemy for free, as a way of saying thank you to all my viewers who have watched my tutorials over these years. The link for that will be in the description. Today's video is an extract of that course that I feel works really well as a single video on YouTube. The course is for people just starting out in 3D, but if you wanted to check it out anyway, and leave her a review as to how you think I went, I would very much appreciate it. The link for that will be in the video's description. Enjoy the tutorial. Now that we've had a practice of both using the main three transforms for manipulating shapes, as well as identifying which primitives uh, we should use to build up the form, I'm gonna be showing an example as to how we can combine those two pieces of knowledge together to work on, let's say, this arm. Now the arm is quite a complicated shape in of itself, but we are looking at only building up a simplified version of it at the current time using only the three basic tools that we have at our disposal, move, rotate, and scale. So, first things first, we have to identify, well, what shapes should we use to build up the form? Now, we aren't going to be worried too much about the fingers just yet. We're not going to be looking at that. That's too detailed at this present time. We're just building up the form. So what I'm thinking is we have two cylinders to represent the both bicep part of the arm as well as the forearm. And then we use a modified cube to represent the palm as well as the fingers. So let's jump in and do that. The first thing I'm going to do is add a cylinder. So I'm gonna add a mesh type object and I'm gonna to navigate to where it says cylinder. Now I'm going to start moving that cylinder into position. I'm gonna rotate it on the Y axis and then I'm gonna scale, it's the right length, so I'm gonna scale on the Y and Z axis. And let me change my view. And there we go, let's move it a bit more. Let's rotate it. So as you can see, I'm just using the really basic tools, but now we've come up to a point where perhaps I need to scale it a bit further in. Now we haven't really looked at, uh, at the moment, transforming uh, parts of an object that are angled like this. So I think now's a good opportunity to show you how to do that. Uh, now, every different software is gonna be a little bit different. I'm just gonna be showing you the Blender way to do things, um, but your 3D software will have an option to do this. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into edit mode and I'm gonna select the move tool. I'm also gonna set it to face selection mode. Select the face. Now, the reason why I'm using the move tool, I could use a scale, but it's a little bit more easier with the move tool. If I move this as such, we could do it this way and that's perfectly acceptable. And if you do decide to do it this way, um, that's okay. I just wanna make you aware of this other option where we essentially are able to change the transform orientation over here. Right now it's set to global. What I'm gonna do is set it from global to normal. Now we won't go into what normals are just yet, but essentially just imagine them as perpendicular points from a face. So let me move it along the normal. And then I'm gonna use my free hand to kind of move it up a little bit. And let's do it with this face as well. Let's select this face and let's move that up a little bit. So there, I might wanna scale this up a little bit. So let's scale that face up and that's looking decent. We're not gonna worry about this protruding muscle shape just yet. Uh, 
I most certainly would include it if I was doing a basic model, but right now we would have to look at another tool and I wanna simplify this process for you uh, without um, sort of overwhelming you at the beginning. So I will show you how to use a tool in a future section, um, but right now we're just leaving it as is because it's just gonna simplify the process for us as we learn. If you do want to have a shot at creating this shape, by all means, go ahead. I highly recommend it as a fantastic sort of exercise to experiment. Now, let's create our next part of the arm. Now, we could jump out of edit mode and go into object mode in Blender. Um, but what I'm going to do is actually stay in edit mode, use shift A. And as you can see, we no longer get all the different type of objects. We go straight into mesh and I'm gonna add cylinder. Let's also make sure to change this back to global and let's set it to rotate. I'm gonna rotate this again. I'm also gonna hold control to bring up a more controlled sort of snapping uh, of the rotate. I'm gonna snap it to here and then I'm gonna move it I'm gonna scale it. And maybe I'm gonna move it down to here. I'm just gonna line up this edge to the edge of the hand. And then I'm going to scale everything on, let's scale everything on Z and Y again. So we can grab that, scale it. Now here we've entered a point do you see how I had to move my camera from the front to the side to be able to reach that little widget? And if I do that, I'm no longer able to see whether or not my scale is correct. Now, what I would personally do is I would use the shortcuts and just um, essentially scale it like this, where I get rid of the uh, X constraint. But because we're still starting out in Blender, I'm only gonna be showing you how I would do it using this tool here. And to do something like this, what I would do is I would change the view. So in Blender, what I'm gonna do is go to view and come down to area, toggle quad view. And this is gonna to toggle my view into four separate views. So now, if I hover over any of my views, I can control from within them. I'm gonna keep it here, and then I'm going to manipulate it in this view. So I've, because I, I can see my, my tool here. So I'm gonna grab that tool and start scaling down, and notice how I can see it on that uh, correct view, and I, I know when it's the correct size now. And there we go. Let me now also go to this view. This is gonna bring my perspective view. So let's change our tool to move. Let's move this as such. Don't have to worry about connecting it just yet. We're just building up the basic forms. And then perhaps I'm going to scale it now on all axes. Something like that. So as you can see, we're very quickly starting to build up our form. Let's move on to the hand. The hand's gonna be a little bit different. So I'm gonna press Shift A, cube. I'm gonna select my move tool, move it into position, scale it down, move it again. Now, this is where we're going to have to come up with a few creative liberties because we can't see how thick the hand is. We can have a good guess because we all have hands. Um, so let's take a guess. Let's go to scale and let's scale it on Y because that's gonna be the thickness of our hand in this case. Let's scale it to around here, I feel. And let's also move it a bit further up here. Because if we look at our hands, it's, it does sort of taper. 
So what we'll also do is we'll add in that taper by going to edge select, selecting an edge, just moving it on Y a little bit. And now I'm just gonna move that forward till it gets to about here. Then I wanna grab this edge. Let's move this edge down to around here. Perfect. So now we've created the palm. Now let's just use a simple cube as well to represent the four fingers. We won't worry about the thumb just in this example as we will be doing a much more in-depth build of the hand in the coming section. As we will be doing a much more in-depth build of the hand in an upcoming section. So again, let's go over it. Let's add, so shift A or add, and let's add a cube. Let's move the cube into position. Let's scale it down on all axes. Use shift if you would like to have a little bit more control. I'm now going to move it so that it matches here. In fact, I will match this edge to this edge as such. And now let's select a face here. Now, as you can see, I'm still in edge select mode, so I'll just change it to face select mode. Let's move that face in as such. See how it's sort of matching our edge here. Now we would definitely be trying to make this a little bit more matching by using uh, a few tools that we haven't looked at. But right now, don't worry about it. It's okay if it's a little bit rough. We're still getting to grips with the main tools. So if it's a little bit rough on your end as you're practicing along, don't worry about it. It's okay. So. Now we've done that, let's select this edge here. So let's change it to edge select. Let's move it up a little bit. Let's select this edge here. Let's move it down a little bit. Let's select this edge. Just didn't select it, select this edge. Move it to about here. Select this edge and we'll move it around. Let's move it to about here. And we also want to taper this as well, because if we look at our own hand, our, all our fingers sort of taper to, as they uh, get to their ends. Okay, let's jump out of edit mode and let's see what we have. As you can see, if we take away this picture, this does look like the structure of a arm and a hand. Now, if we added that thumb in, it's gonna look even more like a, a hand, but we're just keeping things simple for now, so we excluded it. So, I hope that you've been following along. If you haven't, definitely go back uh, to the beginning of this part of the section and follow along with me as I manipulate these shapes to. Um, look like this. Uh, this is really going to be a big boon for you in just practicing with those three, uh, move, rotate, and scale, those three tools. In our next section, we're going to, our next section is going to be all about practicing and practice. So uh, this is just going to give you a little bit of uh, a head start for that section. So uh, definitely try to replicate this for yourself. Don't worry if it doesn't look exactly the same as mine. Remember, this is only a draft where this is not our final model by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, there's still so many things that we could do and could have done to this to make it a far more competent draft. Um, but because we're just starting out, but because we're just starting out, it's important to recognize that um, it's you know it's okay to make mistakes. So I'll see you in the next section. I hope that you've been enjoying this course uh, up to this point. 
Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments, and I will, I will try, tr I will try to get to them at my earliest convenience. And I will get to them at my earliest convenience. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have had a really good day, and I'll see you in the next section.